Good morning and welcome to our time at Ashford Common Baptist Church. Our preacher this morning is Graham Pullum from Barnes Baptist Church and we're really pleased to welcome you Graham and look forward to what the Lord has to say through you. Um, I will be reading from the book of Matthew chapter 15 verses um, 20, I thought it was on the screen, 21 and um, to 28. So the faith of the Canaanite woman. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. Yes, Lord, she said, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Have you ever imagined what it will be like to meet Jesus? Physically meet Jesus. Well, of course, God's word tells us that one day we will see him as he is. We will see him face to face. And can you imagine what that will be like? Perhaps what you could do is put yourself in the place of one of these many people in the scriptures who actually had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. And just picture it in your mind's eye as you approach him or he approaches you. How do you feel? What is he going to say to you? What are you going to say to him? Well, whatever happens, I imagine it will be the most loving, the most affirming of encounters you could ever possibly imagine, ever possibly have. Don't you think so? But what if it's not? What if it's not? What if you were to find yourself ignored by Jesus? What if he were to act as if he had no interest in you whatsoever? What when he does speak to you, he speaks in a very demeaning even racist way. I'm busy. I have no time for a non-Jewish dog like you. Imagine that. Now, how do you feel? Now, how do you feel about your precious, loving Jesus? Cold-hearted? Racist comments, nothing like you expected him to be. It amounts to the biggest, the deepest disappointment in your life. He you've heard so much about, he you have longed to encounter for so long, he you expected so much from. When it comes to it, when your moment comes, you find yourself ignored. You find him rude, even abusive. Well, hard words indeed. And this is certainly not Jesus as we imagine him to be. And yet, this is Jesus as he appeared some 2,000 years ago, when he was encountered by this amazing woman. 
How can we make sense of it? How can we make sense of him? Well, perhaps the answer lies in knowing what this Canaanite woman knew. Something that you might well know yourself. Or something you might not even realize you knew. What was it? Well, to answer that question, we need to look at this encounter once again. This somewhat disturbing encounter at two different levels. First of all, how things appear on the surface. And secondly, looking beneath the surface. First of all, how things appear on the surface. This encounter takes place on one of those few occasions when Jesus crosses over from the border of Israel, withdrawing from the crowds and the relentless pressure is under day by day to the region of Tyre and Sidon, verse 21. You see, even Jesus, even Jesus needed a rest. Even Jesus needed a break. But no chance, no chance, because his fame had spread far and wide. And even here, a Canaanite woman from that vicinity comes to him crying out for help. Lord, verse 22, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. Now, imagine how you would have felt. If at long last it was your day off and you'd managed to get away from all the pressures of work, all the pressures of your ministry. You've been the focus of so many people's hopes, so many people's expectations and not a little denouncement and opposition from the religious authorities. But now you've managed to get some time away with your friends. A time to enjoy one another's company, a time to enjoy some peace and quiet, to recharge the batteries, as it were, before you go back to work, before you go back to your ministry. (sighs) Only to be sought out by someone and a very, very emotional someone who wants your help. Well, how would you feel? Well, no wonder, as we read in verse 23, Jesus did not answer a word. The trouble is this woman can't even take a hint, even an unspoken hint. She keeps following Jesus, crying out for help and really getting on the disciples' nerves. Verse 23, his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying after us. For goodness sake, Jesus, get rid of her. She is driving us nuts. And at last, Jesus does speak. But speaking, he doesn't even address this woman. He speaks to his disciples. But he speaks to them with words that this poor woman is obviously meant to overhear. I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel, he says. But worse, when this woman now comes and kneels before him, pleading for his help, verse 25, Jesus says the kind of thing to her you might expect from his disciples, but not from Jesus. It's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs, he says to her, verse 26. What I'm doing is only for God's people, he's saying, not for unclean scum like you. And remember, for Jews, dogs were only second to pigs with regards to a sense of dirtiness uncleanness, unacceptability. And he calls her a dog, calls this woman a dog. You know, it's been said that it's best never to meet your heroes. 
because the likelihood is they will be a big, big disappointment. So what are we to make of Jesus? What are we to make of Jesus? Well, the incredible thing is that this woman, instead of being offended, instead of being put off, she acknowledges, this desperate mother acknowledges what Jesus says. And she responds in verse 27. Yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Yes, Lord, but even scum such as me, we gratefully receive any crumbs of comfort that you are willing to toss our way. Now, we're not told exactly what effect her reply had on Jesus. Was he amazed? Was he even a bit embarrassed about the way he treated her? Was he moved in any way? But what we are told is that he recognized her great faith and he granted her request. Jesus answered, verse 28, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. So, folks, it all ends very happily. It all ends very happily. The woman's daughter is healed. The Canaanite woman's meeting with Jesus, though not comfortable, was not in vain. And now Jesus and his disciples can get on with their break. And so it's a happy ending all round, isn't it? Well, maybe. Maybe. Because it leaves us all with something of a bad taste, doesn't it? Some unsettling questions. A sense of unease, embarrassment even perhaps, that Jesus acted the way that he did. Well, Maybe this is another one of those parts of scripture that we should just skip over and ignore. Or maybe we could find one of those lame excuses that Christians sometimes come up with to explain away awkward sections of scripture. Oh, yes, I know. God, Jesus does seem rather hard, harsh, doesn't he? But if we were there, we would have seen the twinkle in his eye. He didn't mean it. Or, or perhaps we could look at this episode in context. Dig down a little deeper beneath the surface and see exactly what is going on here. We need to look at what Jesus is really doing. And we need to see what the Canaanite woman was seeing. First of all, what was Jesus doing? Well, throughout his ministry, as you'll know, Jesus was training his disciples. He was teaching them through word and deed. And for almost three years, they were, as it were, learning on the job. They were apprentices, learning and imitating their master, following the way, his way. And there really was no time out for them. Even when they thought themselves to be having a sabbatical, to be on holiday, withdrawing to this region of Tyre and Sidon, even here, ministry must continue. For even here, an opportunity presents itself for Jesus to show his disciples how Contrary to much that they would have seen and heard from other religious leaders, how through Jesus, God's grace was now extending beyond the borders and the people of Israel. And this encounter with this Canaanite woman, this non-Jewish woman, was an opportunity for him to show them that it was a gospel, good news, even for the Gentiles even for the non-Jewish world. And Jesus begins by treating this woman in a way that displays all the prevailing Jewish 
prejudices against non-Jews. I mean, many rabbis in Jesus' day refused to even talk to women. So what does Jesus do when she cries out? Jesus did not answer a word. Verse 23. No surprise to his disciples who think that she should be sent away. And especially so being that she's one of these Gentile dogs, one of these unclean, non-Jewish people. Who they see Jesus contemptuously reproving as any good rabbi would. And so Jesus is acting in a way that any respectable rabbi would have acted and spoken. The way that his disciples expect him to react. He plays out before them all their deepest religious and racial prejudices. And then, having exposed their hard hearts, he turns everything upside down, commends this woman's great faith, and grants her request. Jesus is teaching his disciples that the God of Israel is indeed doing a new thing in and through him. He's exposing their prejudices in words and in deed and sweeping them away with his words and his deeds. Because Israel has come, Israel's Messiah has come to be a blessing to the whole world. Even the dogs are to be invited into God's kingdom. And what about the Canaanite woman? What is she seeing through all this? Well, did you notice, as Esther read to us, did you notice how throughout this encounter with Jesus, she addresses him in the most respectful way? Lord, she calls him, respectfully, sir, even son of David, a messianic title, the hoped for savior of Israel. So she addresses him. How interesting it is that throughout this encounter, she expresses a deeper insight into Jesus than even his disciples had. Such is her belief. Such is her compassion. Such is her belief in his compassion and in his healing power because news of Jesus had spread far and wide, that she sees through these seeming rebuffs and this stereotypical Jewish prejudice. She sees through it all. The disciples see and hear one thing, but she sees and she hears something else. She has an unfailing confidence in Jesus Despite all the surface appearances, she, as it were, believes in him. She has faith that the reality is really quite different. In other words, this woman knows her man. This woman knows her man. And so all this negativity just washes over her. Knowing as she knows and believing as she believes, so she receives. Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. So finally, how can we learn from this encounter, this happy ending? This extraordinary encounter, what can we learn from it? Well, first of all, I suspect that most of us have had hard times when things have not been going well. And when, despite our prayers and our pleas to God, there seems to be a holy silence. When, as it were, Jesus 
doesn't answer a word. Times when we might even begin to wonder, does he really care? And of course, the answer to such doubts is yes, yes, of course he cares. He has promised that no one who follows him will be lost. He has promised that no one can snatch us out of his hand when we put our faith in him. The word of God declares that there is nothing in the whole of creation that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And of course, the cross of Christ is itself our eternal reminder of how much God loves us, you and me. So why do we go through such times of silence? Why do we go through such times of pain? Well, there might be a number of reasons. An unconfessed sin is a big one, one that shouldn't be overlooked. But sometimes God may be teaching or revealing himself to others through his dealings with us. Sometimes the truth of God becomes recognized by or believable to others only by what he does in and through us. Just as Jesus taught his disciples through his treatment of the Canaanite woman, so others, even in the church, may learn or may grow in their understanding of God by the way he treats you, by the way he treats me. And the character of faith that we express, demonstrate in response. Did you notice that the Canaanite woman remained unaware of what Jesus was teaching others through her? She didn't have a clue. And for the sake of others, we, you and I, may be called upon to endure God's silence and times of discouragement. That in the end, we may not only receive his blessing, but be a blessing to others. And the question is, how willing are you, how willing am I to endure such a time? A time of spiritual hardship, a time of unknowing in others in order that others may learn through our example. The quality of faith that even in times of darkness, we live out and witness to before other people. Because remember, if others know you're a Christian, others will be watching you. And they'll be watching you to learn about your Christian faith, or maybe if they're not a believer, the Christian faith. So what do they see? What do they learn? How will they respond? And secondly, and finally, First of all, God may be working through us to teach others. Secondly and finally, we see in this encounter how important, how vitally important it is that we do know Jesus. That we do know Jesus, not just know about him, not just attend the place on a Sunday where folks say he hangs out. But we know him. We know Jesus. It's been said that trusting in God, even though God doesn't answer, is the profoundest trust of all. And we see that, of course, at Gethsemane. We see that at the cross. We see it here in the trust of the Canaanite woman. We see it even when Jesus remained silent and when his disciples urged him to send this nuisance away. But this woman knew her man. She knew her man. And amidst all the pain and adversity, she would not let go of that which she knew to be true of him. Hard words 
and hard deeds. And yet she overcame them and all the misconceptions that were possible because she knew him. And so it's an encounter that warns us that things are not always what they seem to be, even in matters of faith even in our relationship with God. She won her victory because she knew her man. She knew Jesus and she believed in him. And her great faith was the means of great blessing for her, for her daughter. You see, if you remember nothing else from this sermon, remember this that unfailing confidence in Jesus Christ will never go unrewarded. Unfailing confidence in Jesus Christ will never go unrewarded. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness to us your love, your mercy, your grace. But sometimes these blessings aren't always foremost in our minds, particularly when we're going through times that are challenging, especially challenging to our faith. My prayer is, Lord, that first and foremost, we will seek to know the Lord Jesus as best as we possibly can that the quality of our faith will not be dictated by the circumstances of life, but by the depth with which we know our Saviour and Lord. For any who are going through troubled times, Lord, grant them, I pray, the strength, the affirmation they need, the courage even. And may each one of us be an example to each other, Lord, of he who promises that whatever the situation may seem to be, however the circumstances may be, you will never let us go. And we thank you for that wonderful assurance. In this troubled world and in these troubled times, we praise you. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that you found that sermon helpful and would like to join us again on another Sunday. In the meantime, you'll find resources available at our website, on YouTube. So please do take the opportunity to have a look, but let's hope to see you soon. God bless you.